This is episode 69 with ultra marathoner, running coach, and fellow lover of the trails, Mr. Doug Hay. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Jason Fitzgerald, and today is all about trail running. I love trail running. If I had my way, I would practically never run on the roads because trails are just so much more fun. Now, I didn't always love trail running. In fact, for the first two years of my running career, our team barely ever ran off the road. But a friend of mine who ended up being our cross-country captain when I was a junior in high school, he changed all of that. During the summer before the season, he went out and scouted the popular trails on the conservation land in our town. So when practice started, we had all of these planned routes already in place, and my love of off-road running began. Running through fields, beside streams, or along beautiful mountain terrain like I do now in Colorado is such a practical way to make the time go by. (laughs) I know that sometimes not every run is fun. Not every run is blissed out joy, but trails make those miles go by faster. And when you consider the injury prevention benefits, the added athleticism and coordination that you get from trail running, not to mention the strength gains, uh, it's clear that trail running is an incredibly valuable addition to your training. To talk more about how to get started on trails, make the most of them, and what we can expect physically, I'm talking today with my friend Doug Hay. I first met Doug in about 2012 for a trail run in Washington, D.C.'s Rock Creek Park, and we've gone on several runs since then, always on the trails. He's an ultra runner. He's a running coach. He's also the co-host of the No Mean Athlete radio podcast and someone whose passion for trail running is infectious. He's also the creator of the Trail Runners System and the sponsor of today's episode. The Trail Runner System is your go-to resource for excelling as a trail runner. Head on over to strengthrunning.com slash TRS. I'm very clever, and the TRS stands for Trail Runners System, and you can see all the details, including the key differences between road and trail running and how you can take advantage of them to become a beast on the trails. Oh, I almost forgot. You're going to get 25% off. I negotiated this discount with Doug, and he's thrilled to offer it to Strength Running listeners. One more time, that's strengthrunning.com slash TRS to see all the details. All right, let's dive into our discussion on trail running with the man himself, Mr. Doug Hay. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, This is Jason Fitzgerald from Strength Running, and I'm thrilled today to be joined with Doug Hay, a good friend of mine and uh, an incredible ultra runner and trail runner. And we are going to discuss trail running today. So, Doug, thanks so much for joining me. It's my pleasure, Jason. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So, we are going to talk about trail running today because it's a topic that uh, is near and dear to my heart. I started uh, trail running much more frequently uh, back in high school, and I almost immediately recognized all the benefits of trail running, um, you know, both physically and mentally. And I think if more runners did more of their mileage on trails, I think we'd all be better off um, from a a wide variety of perspectives. So uh, I want to encourage all of my strength running readers to uh, do some more trail running, and I thought you would be the perfect guest uh, because you almost exclusively run on trails. Is that right? That is right. But I will say, like you said, I think a lot of people have this idea that if you're a trail runner, you're either just a trail runner, or if you're a road runner, you're just a road runner. But the benefits for both groups, you know, there's benefits to training on the road, of course, and building up speed and and leg turnover. And then there are tons of benefits for road runners uh, for running on the trails. And you can actually become a better road runner by spending time on the trails. But yeah, I, I do almost all my running on trails these days, um, especially now that I've moved down to, to Asheville, North Carolina, and I just have mountains and trails all over the place. So I get to get to run run free through the woods uh, on a daily basis, which is a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah. And, and I think you brought up a really good point that you don't necessarily have to be either 100% trail runner or 100% road runner. Both have their place and both can be used strategically in in your training depending upon what you're preparing for Uh, and I I think the other important thing to note too is um, 
you don't have to uh, run the types of trails that I think most runners think of mm -hmm. when we talk about trail running. You don't have to be on technical single track out in the mountains at 14,000 feet elevation or something crazy like that. Uh, I consider trail running to be any surface that's not the road or the sidewalk. So uh, if you're in Central Park in New York City and you're running on a dirt path in Central Park, that's a form of trail running. And sure. I think, you know, where I am in Denver, there's a lot of parks in the city that have crushed gravel paths that uh, are really great because they're, you know, it's off the road, you're off, you know, the, from the pounding on the cement and the concrete. So uh, they offer a lot of benefits there, but most people don't really think of that as trail running. But I do think that, you know, as long as you're off the road, you're doing a type of trail running. You're exactly right. And, you know, both of us used to live in the Washington, D.C. area, and that's actually where I got into trail running for the first time. Uh, I had been running road marathons for a few years and was burnt out my you know I was fighting a bunch of injuries and, a, and an old roommate suggested that I, I check out some of the trails in Rock Creek Park which is a big park that runs through the city and they're not you know mountain trails they're not super technical or or rugged most of them are pretty smooth um, horse trails they're wide and, and, and smooth and and you can move pretty quickly on them and that's really where I got into trail running because I was seeing the benefits of of running on the dirt and on the uneven, uneven uh, surface, uh, both for injury prevention and for and for my mental, you know, wellness, and and then that was translating into me running faster during half marathons and marathons on the road, and then I got addicted and eventually started doing ultra marathons and and really switching almost all my training to to trails. But it started out on these smooth, wide paths that that most people have in their public. Um, town or state parks yeah and you know we've gone on a couple of trail runs together in rock creek park mm -hmm. and what i love about that park is that it does offer so many different types of trail running right yeah. you can get on some much more technical narrow trails mm -hmm. uh, that are you know right above the the little creek there yeah. or you can be on those very wide trails that aren't very hilly at all those horse trails yeah exactly. um, and that's great um but you know you mentioned talking about kind of the the mental aspects of trail running and how that makes it, um, you know, it, almost more enjoyable. Like, do you think that, that being on the trails, whether that's in, in the woods somewhere or even in a city park, do you think that somehow makes running a little bit easier from a mental perspective? Absolutely. For, for me and for so many of the readers of Rock Creek Runner, I hear all the time that, that road running will just, it'll burn you out, especially if you live in a city or a crowded place running crowded sidewalks and having to stop at, at crosswalks regularly uh, can be really tough on, on, on you mentally. It, it breaks up your run. It, it's, you know, you're fighting against all these, these issues like people and crowds and, and that kind of thing, cars. And so moving to the, moving to the trail where you, uh, you know, aren't dealing with people, you have birds chirping, you're, the only noise is really your foot hitting the, the leaves up underneath you. Um, it can, it's really an opportunity to, to take a deep breath and enjoy the run, kind of get mentally into the run more instead of, instead of having to fight all these ob obstacles that come with uh, crowded roads. So for me, it's a definite, you know, it, it allows me to, to really enjoy myself and it's an opportunity to escape and, and get into my head and, and think things through and, and that, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and I think that's something that, uh, we shouldn't overlook. And, and I know that, you know, it's kind of crazy when you hear us talk about, oh, it's really nice to hear the birds chirping, <laughs> or <laughs> I just love hearing the water flowing in the river. Right, right. But, you know, these things are really important. And when I first started trail running, I actually found that, you know, if I had an hour run on the schedule that our coach told us to go run for an hour in high school, um, if we got into the woods and, and just did some trail running, and it didn't matter if we were you know, deep in some crazy woods or, or if it was simply, uh, you know, a very small trail area, the time went by a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And for those runners who struggle with getting bored on their run or simply, um, you know, they just get frustrated and they want to be done sooner, trail running offers such a great uh, escape, like you said, from normal road running. You don't have to deal with traffic or cars beeping their horns and, mm. and all that stuff that is frankly a little stressful. Uh, you don't have to deal with any of that. 
I like to think of, of trail running as, as play in a lot of ways. And of course, it can be very serious and you can do some really tough workouts uh, on the trail. But most of the time when I'm running, you know, you're kind of hopping over logs and rocks or, you know, dealing with creek crossings and that kind of thing. And it's playful. It's fun. It takes you back to this primitive, uh, you know, childlike play that, that you don't normally experience um, you know, on a day-to-day basis and certainly not when you're running through crowded sidewalks. So for me, it's just kind of this opportunity to have fun and let loose and, and enjoy the run a lot more than I would by pounding the pavement. Right. And, and I think there's a huge parallel um, with just the benefits of being in nature. Uh, you know, my, my wife is, you know, I'm the running geek in the family. My wife is the education geek. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she's always telling me how important it is for little kids mm-hmm. just to be outside, to be playing outdoors. And, you know, maybe for our generation uh, and, and people a little older than us, you know, we grew up with our parents kind of like throwing us outside and be like, yeah, come back for dinner. But other than that, you know, <laughs> we want you outside for the whole day. Right. And, and I think as we get older and, you know, we have jobs and responsibilities and all these things, we spend less and less time outside. And I think if we can um, spend that precious time that we do have running in a more natural environment, you know, the benefits are are lower stress, um, you know, it's the the benefits are significant. And and I think we shouldn't overlook that. Sure. I, uh, I, that reminds me of an article I read in the, in the Washington Post a while back where in Japan, apparently they're doing this program, this new program, for inner city um, people, residents, um, where they're where they're bussing them out to the to national parks and, and nature walks and things. So they're not doing big exercises, but they're just taking them out to the woods so that they can breathe in the fresh air and walk through the dirt and everything. And it's re- significantly reducing uh, the stress levels of these people who are participating in the program. And I think they call it like nature bathing or something like that, which. You know, has obviously has nothing to do with running, but that that uh, experience of being out in the in the woods and in in nature uh, can be really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when was the last time you spent an hour or two out in the woods or even on the trails? If you if you were were running or not running, and you came back stressed or right. you had a bad day yeah. after being yeah. outside, absolutely. like it never happens, right? Right. Um, so you you were talking about you know, some of the things that you encounter on the trails, you know, fallen logs and rocks and roots and some of the natural obstacles that you encounter. Um, And I want to talk about how uh, some people might be intimidated by running trails. Do you think that, you know, some of the obstacles are what intimidates people or are there other things that you've found that most people struggle with when they want to get started with trail running? Sure, absolutely. I think that in the fear of, of, Running trails and the fear of the unknown is a big thing that keeps people from from trying it, even if it's just uh, a local town park that that has some trails, because it's it's different. You do have to change a little bit about how you run, and you are certainly going to encounter more obstacles like stream crossings and rocks and roots and and down branches. Um, the I guess the issue is that or, you know, the, what you need to do is, is understand that most of the time, that's not a big deal at all. Most of the time, like you said, you're not going to be at 14,000 feet scrambling over rocks where with a cliff on, on the side, you know, you might have to jump over a rock or, um, work your way over a log, but that's just part of the fun. That's part of the experience. And that, and for me, that's, that's part of the thrill. Um, I think people assume that, that, trail running is, is a lot more dangerous, that they'll run into wildlife or they're much more likely to fall and injure themselves or get lost. That's a big one that people will fear is, is getting lost. But as long as you take precautions ahead of time, like letting somebody know where you're going, studying a map, uh, you know, making sure that you know where you're going, and, and running with a partner is another just a great way to kind of ease those concerns and, and have someone there, uh, if you did happen to fall, who would be there with you. But falling is kind of one of those things that it is going to happen probably for people when they're just starting out because you do have to worry about things you don't worry about on on the road. Um, You know, I know I fell quite a few times at the very beginning, but just like riding a bike or just like flying a kite, the more you do it, the better you get. And and now I hardly ever stumble. I hardly ever fall. And that's just because I'm I'm a lot better of a trail runner than I used to be. So if if it's something that's interested that you're interested in doing, if it's something you want to add into your training, 
don't let that hold you back. Just get out there, try it a few times, get more comfortable on the trail, um, and then and you know you're really a lot less likely to to get injured than than you think you would be. Yeah, just try it. I think is the yeah. the ultimate lesson here because if you're if your first time on the trails is not on a very technical trail, I don't think you really have to worry about sure. falling. Just like, I mean, you have to worry about falling even when you're not trail running yeah. with potholes and curbs and all the other kind of city obstacles that you'll experience when you're running uh, out on the sidewalk or on the road. Uh, not to mention other pedestrians and traffic hmm. with cars that uh, I think is a lot more dangerous. Uh, you know, I've personally almost been hit by a car or a bike mm. uh, or other people so many more times than I've almost gotten hurt on on the trails. Right. Uh, even though, you know, look, people should not be afraid of falling. Uh, I fell twice on my long run out on the trails just three days ago. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, my knee got a little scraped up, but... You know, the thing that hurts the most was my ego afterward, sure. <laughs> and <laughs> that's usually the case. The kind of injuries that you sustain from falling are usually not that bad. Um, you know, the other day, I don't know if, oh, it's actually all healed, but I ran into a tree. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but these things happen, and they're not uh, the things that you should really be scared of when you uh, go trail running. Uh, I think the probably the most... Um, intimidating thing about trail running is probably getting lost, uh, especially if you're in a very um, complex trail network or uh, if you are doing some more technical trail running that is in a very large national park. Mm -hmm. But, you know, studying a map, like you mentioned, uh, is really helpful or just telling people where you're going. One of the other really helpful strategies that I found is simply doing an out and back run. Right. Um, so you're, you don't take any side trails, don't get off the main trail, just run out for, you know, half the time that you want to be running and then just turn around and come back and mm -hmm. Uh, that's a really helpful way to not get lost. Um, but but I think the other intimidating things about trail running, you know, including wildlife and things like that, um, you know, th those are things that you really shouldn't worry about. Just like you shouldn't worry about, um, you know, a, a building falling on you if you're running in the city. Like it's probably not going to happen. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure you're much more likely to get hit by a car than you are to encounter a bear that's going to attack you or something like that on the trail. Right. But, you know, it's like people who are afraid of flying in an airplane, right. but they're in a car three times a day, when statistically, driving a car is probably one of the most dangerous things that you can do. Sure, absolutely. And just going back to the getting lost, um, you know, I think you're right, that probably is what, what scares people the most. But there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of by pulling out a map, you know, carrying a map with you in, in a pocket or, or a, a pack or something like that. And pulling it out and, and you know examining it if you come to an intersection that you don't know exactly which way to go. The outback is a fantastic one. Um, running with somebody who's more familiar with the trails, who's yeah. already done that route, is 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 clutch. Um, and then you know I've been known to to leave myself little arrows and with sticks on on the trail. You know uh, if I'm coming back, if I know I'm coming back a certain way, um, just so that I can see those arrows uh, on the trail. But you know like you said, there's there are so many reasons to feel intimidated by trail running, but most of them are, are not things that are actually going to happen to you uh, or issues that you should really be concerned with. All right. So, okay, let's transition to um, talking about some more technical aspects of trail running. And, and you had mentioned before that when um, you first got, got started with trail running, you started seeing the benefits of, of running more of your mileage on trails. And that was your, your gateway drug to becoming a, an ultra runner and, and almost exclusively running on trails. Right. Um, so what do we have to keep in mind when we start running on trails? Uh, does the type of running that we do on trails, does it require a change to our, our running form? Uh, and, and let's start with that. Sure. Uh, you know, it does. It You're not going to be able to open up your stride as much on a trail as you are on the road. Um, you know, I think that it kind of, or it definitely depends on the type of trail that you're running. If you're running a smooth, light gravel path that, you know, like a rails to trails or something that follows, we had a great one that followed the canal around DC, then you're, you know, you're, you're pretty much running on a, a perfectly flat and smooth surf surface. And that, but that is still considered a trail. So if you're on something like that, then your form's not going to adjust so much. When you're when you're running on something more technical and more hilly, 
then you are going to have to shorten your stride a little bit, um, lift your feet a little bit, and and I like to call it more of a more of a shuffle than than a than a full stride, where you're you're being very light on your feet because you're having to bounce around a little more. You're having to jump over or uh, can be concerned about roots and rocks a lot more. Uh, the lighter you can be on your feet, the the better you're, the, the more likely you are to, to not trip and, and, and tumble. So that that's probably a big one. The other thing is you really need to slow down, especially if you're just starting out. If you're if you run a, a you know an eight minute pace per mile uh, on the road, chances are unless it's a perfectly smooth flat trail, you're not going to be able to come anywhere close to that. Um, with the same level of effort. So uh, slowing down on the trail, being much more concerned about the distance uh, rather than the time for your first several trail runs will allow you to to run at the speed that you need to to safely be on the trail. Um, and so th- those are kind of the two big things that I, that I suggest to brand new trail runners is lift your feet, take shorter strides. If you're, you know, instead of Extending your stride to get over a root or a rock, take two steps instead of instead of one, um, and then to of course slow down and and you know run for time and total time instead of distance. That's great advice. Uh, I've I've noticed that firsthand with with my running, and I know that uh, the particularly the shorter, quicker steps uh, can be very helpful because you're navigating a lot more obstacles on the path because the surface is a lot more uneven mm-hmm. you'll be required just to take shorter steps in order to get around those obstacles safely if you're taking much longer or more bounding strides uh, you're going to be a lot less stable on your right. feet and much you're going to be more likely to fall yeah. um, and and that was when when I took a little tumble this past weekend I was going downhill mm-hmm. and um, you know I did I wasn't taking my own advice I was opening up my stride. I was trying to, you know, make up some time on this good downhill, but because of, there was a little bit of mud, uh, I went straight down, uh, and it it wasn't pretty, but I can definitely speak to that. And, um, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, taking shorter steps and, and taking two steps when you may only take one, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from born to run. Uh, and I know we've talked about this in the past where if, uh, I think the quote is, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but if you're thinking about taking one or two steps between rocks, take three. Yeah. And the lesson there is just so great because uh, the shorter, quicker steps that you are going to take on the trails, you're going to be more stable on your feet. You're going to fall less often. Uh, and you're just going to be more confident on the trails. And I think that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like you said, on the downhill, it's even that much more important because your footwork is just, is just crucial to... Um, to staying upright and being able to stay in control uh, on the downhill. If you just open up and you're just flying down, you know these big long strides. It's hard to stay to be stable, and it's hard to stay in control. So with these shorter strides, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go slower. You're just turning your feet over a lot more frequently. Um, will keep you more stable uh, on on the downhill, especially. And the, you know the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of trails have a lot of significant and quick changes in in elevation. So you might be going downhill one second, flat, you know, for a short period, and then uphill. You know, it's it's it will change more dramatically than than it is uh, going to change on a road for the most part. Um, and so learning how to adapt your your stride a little bit for that too, to be able to quickly transition from the downhill to the flat to the uphill back to the downhill. Um, is something that takes a little bit of practice, and, and you'll get more comfortable with it over time. But um, you know, you have to, I guess, prepare for yourself mentally uh, for those adjustments uh, in your stride from the different elevation. And all those adjustments too make a big impact on your pace. I mean, you mentioned the importance of slowing down. Um, you know, it's it's such a significant change to people who are used to running on the road and getting into like a really solid rhythm. Um, mm-hmm. Because one thing that you don't usually get on trails, especially the more technical trails, the ones that have more hills or uh, terrain variations, is that you don't really get into a rhythm because you're constantly turning or going uphill or downhill uh, or navigating around some obstacles. So your pace might be significantly slower um, on, on a trail than, than being on a road. Uh, I know for me, I mean, I ran my long run at over a nine minute pace this past weekend. And normally I'm two minutes faster, uh, per mile. And it, it can be very humbling for people who are used to a certain speed 
on on the roads, but you have, just have to keep in mind that it's a whole different animal. It's almost like a different sport. Um, the demands are much different, and you just have to let go of some of those pace expectations and instead rely much more on running by feel and running by effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just last week, I, my, my brother-in-law was visiting, uh, and he he's a, an accomplished road marathoner. You know, has lots of lots of experience on the road. And we went out for a trail run, and, and he was really struggling in some ways. In other ways, he was doing very well. But um, making the transition from the different elevation changes and the more technical trail to the to the less technical trail, and we were talking about that. We were talking about how um, he doesn't feel like he can get into a rhythm. Uh, on those on on the trail, particularly on this trail, as much as as he could on the on the road, and I think for me over time I've come to realize that it's a different type of rhythm. It's certainly not where you're just locking in your stride and locking in a pace, but you're more locking in an effort. Um, and yes, you know, and and you might be going a lot faster on the downhill or on the flats than you are on the uphill, and and lots of times I, I'll even hike this steep uphill. And us ultra runners, we still consider that running. I know that a lot of shorter speedsters uh, don't consider that running, but of course, um, you know, if you if you have to hike to maintain an effort level, there there's there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. And so you're locking in instead of a consistent uh, pace or or stride, you're locking into this consistent effort, and and you're having to adjust your pace accordingly. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um... All right, let's 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 move and talk about the injury prevention benefits of trail running. And, and you know, this is like you, everyone knows who's probably watching this that injury prevention is like my favorite topic <laughs> of all time because it allows you to be more consistent. And I like to say that consistency is the secret sauce to successful running. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've written on your website, rockcreekrunner.com, about the injury prevention benefits of trail running. But in, in your experience, you know, are there – significant uh, prevention benefits to running trails? Because I know a lot of people think that they're more likely to get hurt on trails, mm -hmm. uh, but but you and I think differently. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and we've, we've discussed this a lot, and, and I love discussing it because I think you're right. I, people assume that trail running means means more injury. And of course, there are the, the opportunities to fall or to twist your ankle a little bit. But you know, like I said before, you're much less likely to have that happen over time uh, and as you get more comfortable in the trails. Um, but as far as running injury prevention goes, the trails are a, a wonderful place for that for a few different reasons. The, the obvious one is the softer surface. Um, you're not having as much uh, impact on your joints uh, as you would on a, on a harder surface like a road. But the other one that people don't necessarily think about is the, how the change in the terrain, so how the inconsistencies in the terrain are actually benefiting you. Um, most running injuries are caused by repetitive strain injury. So taking the exact same motion over and over and straining your body and your muscles in the exact same way every after every stride. When you're on the trails, you're having to adjust your stride constantly. You're having to mix your stride up, and that is working different muscles. It's working your ankles and your knees and your core and your hips in different ways than, than the road is. And by building up those surrounding muscles, uh, and, and mixing up your, your stride, you're actually significantly reducing the risk of a repetitive strain injury. So in that sense, I think trail running is a great tool for, for injury prevention for road runners and for trail runners. So when you get back on the road, um, you've built up all this strength around the muscles that, that you're, you're, you're using over and over again on, on the consistent surface, and, and you're much less likely to get injured because of it. Yeah, the the... The strength that you develop in the smaller stabilizing muscles and all of the ancillary muscles that kind of support all of the, the bigger muscles that you mentioned, you know, everyone knows the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, but, you know, there's a lot of um, smaller stabilizing muscles that don't get worked as much on the roads that get a hell of a workout on the trails. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of trail runners, uh, a lot of people who start trail running will notice that after their first big trail run, their body is sore in all these ways that oh, yeah. is totally different from road running. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that just goes to show that trail running, I think, is a much more whole body type of workout. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you'll, you'll, you'll even experience maybe some upper body soreness just because you're, um, you know, the way that you're climbing hills and descending hills uh, and turning uh, is definitely stressful in, a, in many different ways than road running is. Um, but of course, it's stressful in a good way. Uh, this, is, this is an example of a good type of stress and uh, it's going to make you a stronger runner. I think it's going to make you a less injury prone runner, especially if a runner is injury prone one of the best things that they can do is run more trails. Mm. Um, I really, I'm a huge believer in the irregular surfaces and that variety. Um, you know, anyone who's read my stuff for a while or uh, gone through injury prevention for runners knows that variety is such a critical component to my injury prevention philosophy. Because I mean, let's face it, running is one of the most repetitive things that you can do, uh, and that's why the overuse injury rate is so high. Is because um, not only are we really good at pushing ourselves when we shouldn't be, but our sport is just incredibly repetitive. So, uh, you know, the name of the game then is, okay, how do we reduce that repetition? Uh, the best way to do it is to stop running, but who the hell wants to do that, right? <laughs> so what we do is we get on the trails, um, more turns, more uphills, downhills, more variety and variation in the terrain, fewer injuries. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, and... You know, if you understand repetitive strain or repetitive stress injuries, you know that that's one of the best ways to stay healthy in the long term. Absolutely. And, and like you said, if, if you don't believe that, then go out for a five mile trail run and, and see how your body feels afterwards. And then you, you'll know for sure that it is working different muscles than what you're used to. There's our challenge. There's our challenge to everyone who's watching this right now. If you are not a trail runner, your homework sometime in the next <laughs> one to two weeks is to go and do a five mile trail run on more, let's do a, a more technical trail yep. and see how you feel afterward. Uh, our bet is that you'll, you'll feel it in a lot of different ways than you would five miles on the road. I, all right. Sounds great. I love it. All right, Doug. Um, let's, okay. One more question before we, we talk uh, more specifically about um, the trail runner system, which I'm really excited about. Uh, if someone were to get started with trail running tomorrow, sure. zero experience, never has run off-road, what are a couple pieces of advice that you would give them besides what we've already talked about? Yeah, I would certainly say, like what we've already said, slow down, make sure that you're running um, for time and, and not distance or pace. So if you would typically run uh, five miles in an hour, then run for an hour and, and not worry about how far you actually get. So mm -hmm. slow down, uh, lift your feet, and you know be, take smaller steps. We already mentioned that one as well. And then the, the next thing I would say is that don't worry about it. Just just go out there and do it. You don't need new shoes. You don't need new gear. If you get into it really seriously, then you're going to want to invest in some a pair of trail shoes uh, and maybe some handheld you know bottle if if you're going out for the longer runs and, and that sort of thing so you might you might need new gear over time but if you're just going out for a few miles on the trails if you're going out to a local park and and doing a five mile trail run you don't need all this stuff and i think people uh, assume that they all of a sudden need to invest in all this new gear because they're they're going on the trail so just don't let those sort of obstacles hold you back because if you right now you could run two miles on the road hop on the trail for for a mile and then all you know, then you're done, and all of a sudden you've you've gotten a little time on the trail, and you've gotten some of the benefits that we've talked about already. So those are the big things I, I would talk about, and then of course the safety. You know, make sure you tell somebody where you're going. Make sure you're familiar with uh, the trails a little bit, and you know, carry your phone if you can. But but the big thing is, you know, just go out and do it because there's absolutely no no reason, no good reason not to hop on a local trail and at least give it a try. I think one of the things that stops many people from trail running in the first place is that they think they need a whole new uh, wardrobe and all this new uh, trail gear that's specific to trail running. And mm -hmm. it's simply not the case. I mean, you've already talked about this at length, but I'll just say from my own personal experience, I have done a lot of trail running in my day. And it's only in the last couple months that I have gotten a pair of trail running shoes. Mm. Um, most trail running shoes I don't really like. Um, you know, they tend to be a little bit more bulky. They have some, um, you know, the, the sole of the shoe offers more traction and typically I don't really prefer that. And so I've done a lot of technical trail running with road running shoes and for the most part, they work really well. Uh, you don't need extra stuff 
to become a trail runner uh, or just to do a little bit of trail running throughout the week. So I want to encourage everyone not to let that stand in your way. That's not a good reason to do a little bit of trail running. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and start small. If you are able to just incorporate a mile or two miles into a longer run, um, a, a mile or two mile of trails into a longer run uh, is a great way to start. You know, and or start with a three mile loop that uh, is in a local park that you can just run a few times or stop after one if if, if that's all you want. Uh, you know, start small. You don't have to go on these epic twenty mile mountain runs. You can just start by incorporating it slowly, building up over time, and and you'll really see the benefits there. Yeah. All right. We've gone over a lot of different a lot of different uh, material here to help people get started with trail running and. Um, uh, help make trail running an easier thing to get started with. But uh, we've really only scratched the surface. And Doug, you've recently put together uh, probably the best trail running uh, program I've ever seen. Uh, very uh, video-based, which I love. Uh, I think that's really great for the learning process. But tell us more about the trail runner system and um, you know what, what kind of program it really is. Sure. It's something I'm super excited about, and we just released it. Um, a couple weeks ago, it's it's a system that is designed to help people transition from the roads, people, runners of all abilities, to transition from the roads to the trails, and then if they want to, from uh, shorter distance trail running to endurance trail running, uh, a trail marathon or a 50k or 50 mile ultra marathon. So it is a series of videos and audio interviews with about. 11 or 12 different experts. So um, you're actually one of the injury prevention experts, but um, we have uh, elite elite endurance or elite ultra runners like Stephanie Howe, who's won Western States and you know a whole number of other elite ultra runners. Uh, and then some mid packers who are, uh, have tons of experience, but know what it's like to be training with a full-time job and in a family and, and dealing with all of those types of things that that are required uh, or that most mid packers are actually experiencing um, and it is it's audio and video covering everything from nutrition for runners to injury prevention a library of, of training plans we have 10 different training plans from base building and half marathon to marathon and 50k 50 mile ultra marathons and on top of that there's this community side of it there's um, a private community where runners really of all levels we have someone who's 75 years old and uh, just ran his first trail 10k a couple weeks ago um, that's awesome to you know to someone who's training for a hundred miler uh, and and it's neat everyone is coming together and supporting each other and sharing their secrets and sharing tips about gear and it, it's it's this really neat um, online system where you log in and um, you work your way through the different lessons the different units and I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited for for runners to to be able to have this information as they transition from the roads to eliminate eliminate those fears and and really be able to smartly transition from the roads to the trails and incorporate that into their training so they don't have to be going after a big trail marathon or ultra marathon um, you know it might just be that you want to incorporate a little bit more trail into your road training but now you have the tools and you have the the knowledge to do it properly and to do it efficiently yeah, and what I really like, like about it is that it's incredibly immersive. So it's not just like an ebook that you get. It, right. It's a complete um, website that you log into. And then once you're logged into um, the trail runner system, the, the types of um, kind of formats of uh, content that you get are, are very comprehensive. So there's audio, video, there's text, there's training plans, uh, and the other thing that I really like is that you've brought in so many other different people to learn from. Right. And one of the things that you know I try to uh, do frequently at Strength Running that uh, I think you've done exceptionally well in the trail runner system is that let's take the principles or the systems that elites use or uh, professionals or even like sub-elite runners and let's scale them down to uh, the recreational runner. So, um, you know... There's so, so much that we can learn from elite runners. And of course, we're not saying you have to run 140 miles a week uh, in the mountains to be a trail runner. Of course not. But there are still lessons that we can learn from people who are performing at the top of their sport. Uh, and so you've brought in 
a lot of experts in that regard. You brought in some, some registered dietitians and some other people who are really great at providing their expertise. Uh, and it's all centered on trail running. So it's very, very specific and very immersive, which I really love. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm, you know, I'm really proud of how it came together and excited for, for the runners that are already using it. And I know that they're, they're benefiting greatly. And, and it, was, it was neat to have you as part of the, the system and just so many other experts. Like you said, you know, I take their interviews and, and break them down for you and, and help, uh, help you understand how you can actually incorporate that information into, into your training and make it a useful for you, not just not just because they're elites and they say you should do this, but what elements of that you can use and incorporate into your training. I love it. And then, of course, there's the community aspect of it. And we all know that there's power in numbers. Uh, I just wrote about my lone wolf theory where I encourage people to get outside help if they need it, uh, surround yourself with people who have similar goals and <laughs> I can't think of a better way to do it if you want to get started with trail running and be serious about it uh, than, uh, you know, getting the trail runner system. So I'm going to include some more information underneath the uh, interview here on strength running. But Doug, thanks so much for um, sharing your expertise here and answering all these questions. I know that we only scratched the surface here, but it was still a lot of fun to chat. Absolutely. It's, it's been my pleasure. And, I, you know, I absolutely love talking about trail running and how how it's changed my life and how it's changed so many other other readers and, and, and people who are, are joining the trail runner, system, trail runner system now. So thanks for letting me come on and talk about it. And uh, I hope to see some some new people in there. Yeah, definitely. And, and I, I would be remiss not to actually show my shirt here. I'm wearing a shirt that says, this is my gym. <laughs> and of course, there's pictures of runners on the trails there. Yeah, you know, you posted that uh, a shot of you in that shirt on Instagram one time. And, and I was like, wow, I love that shirt. Where did you get that? And that, that's neat. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll try to include a link to the shirt. I forget exactly where I got it, but I'll yeah. look for it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Jason. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Thanks, Doug. Take care. Hey, it's Jason. Just two more things before you leave today. First, I hope this conversation helped you appreciate trail running just a little more. Maybe you're more likely to run off road or are ready to embrace trail running as a way to help you stay healthy and get stronger. Either way, trail running is just an awesome way to use your running fitness to get lost, experience nature, and see the world. And finally, I do hope that you'll check out the trail runner system at strengthrunning.com slash TRS. Inside the trail runner system, there's an enormous amount of trail-specific content to help you get started on trails the right way. There are 11 interviews, including with myself, so if you'd like to hear me talk more about the injury prevention side of trails, that's where you can find it. There's hours of video, training plans, and a lot more than what I can reasonably talk about here on the podcast. So if you'd like to get started on a grand new challenge, maybe you want to run the Grand Canyon rim to rim, or otherwise explore our beautiful public lands, now you have the support to do it. And Doug has already applied a 25% discount on the program, so you're going to save some bling bling. Head on over to strengthrunning.com slash TRS to claim your discount and start trail running. Thanks for listening all. We'll be in touch soon.